My name is Mullah Hussain, and I was the first to believe in the Bab. I'm here to talk to you about that significant night that changed my life and the entire course of human history. The nights when, according to the Bab, will be celebrated by all mankind. The night when I met the object of my quest. The night when I met the one whose coming was to breathe an everlasting life into the corpse of the world and whose words was to revolutionize the soul of men. I met the Bob. I want you to imagine what it's like for humanity to have been pleading and praying for generation after generation. Imagine studying the passages, the holy writings from all heavenly scriptures about his coming and what it will do to our planet. That it will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then to leave a time of his appearance. I've been a deep scholar of Islam. I grew up in a Shia society. And I've been very familiar with the passages and traditions about the Promised One. As goes this thousand-year-old Islamic prophecy indicating that the coming of the Promised One will be in the year 1844. Before that significant night took place, I've been a student of two great teachers. Sheikh Ahmad and his successor, Sayyid Qazim. They've been trying to prepare as many people as they could for the coming of the Promised One, for the time of his coming has arrived. After the passing of Sayyid Qazim, with a few fellow students, we set off to find the Promised One. To prepare myself, I fasted and prayed for 40 days and then set off first to Boucher and then to Shiraz. I was drawn there as if by a magnet. At a dusk, when I arrived at the city gates of Shiraz, a youth of radiant countenance, wearing a green turban, approached me with a smile of loving welcome. He greeted me with such a kindness as if we were lifelong friends. He offered me to be his guest so that he could provide some rest after my long journey. I politely asked to be excused from being his guest as my companions were awaiting me. He said I should leave them to God and God will assuredly protect them. So I was so impacted by his kind mannerism and sweet utterances that I accepted to be that stranger's guest. There at his place, with his own hands, he washed my hands and my feet and then offered me some tea. Half an hour after sunset, the youth began conversing with me. Though I again asked to be excused, for my companions were awaiting me that night. He said, I have conditioned my return to them upon the will of God. And according to the will of God, my return to them is not permissible. And I should not fear leaving my promise unfulfilled. When he began conversing with me, he said, who I consider to be my leader after the passing of Sayyid Qazim. I said, shortly before his passing, the great Sayyid has instructed all his followers and students to leave their homeland in search of the promised one, for the time of his coming has come. So this is why I have traveled to Iran and in search of the promised one, and I am still looking for the promised one. The young man then said, has the Sayyid indicated certain signs and specific characteristics by which to recognize the promised one? Yes, the great Sayyid has told us, I replied, 
that the promised one is a descendant from Prophet Muhammad, going back to his daughter Fatima. At the time of his coming, his age would be between 20 and 30, and he is free from bodily deficiencies, and most importantly, he's endowed with divine knowledge. There was a silence. After which, he said, Behold, all these signs are manifest in me. I was stunned. He then went over every one of the aforementioned signs and conclusively demonstrated that each and all were applicable to his person. I replied that he whose advent we await is a man of unsurpassed holiness, and the cause he is to bring is the cause of utmost sovereignty. The great Sayyid would tell us that his own knowledge would be as a drop when compared to the great knowledge of the Promised One, and all of his attainments would be as a speck of dust when compared to the immensity of his sovereignty. As soon as I said these words, a sense of shame and regret came over me, and I decided to take a more humble approach. At this point, the Bab took his pen up, and chanting the words as he wrote them. He began revealing the verses and all the answers to the questions I have not been able to resolve, even without me voicing them without me voicing them, including the commentary to the Surah of Joseph that up to then, no one has been able to elucidate. The overpowering effect of the manner in which he wrote was heightened by the gentle intonation of his voice that accompanied his writings. I was enraptured by the magic of his pen. Not for one moment did he interrupt the flow of his revelation. When he finished, it was two hours and 11 minutes after sunset. In May 22, 1844, at that moment, I had no further need of proof. After all this search, he is the one, he is the Bob, the promised one of all ages, unknown to the sleeping world. Oh, can you imagine what I was feeling at that moment? He then addressed me in these words, O thou who art the first to believe in me, verily I say, I am the Bob, the gate of God, and thou art the gate of that gate. Eighteen souls must in the beginning, spontaneously and of their own accord, accept me and recognize the truth of my revelation. Each unwarned and uninvited must find me, and then to each we shall appoint a special mission. He then asked me to go to Tehran, where I will find a source of great mystery and great knowledge. Everything that he told me that night came true. Eighteen souls were he later called the letters of the living. One by one found him. And to each, we were given the special task to go all over Persia to teach his cause. The opposition was incredible. But in the face of the opposition, martyrdom, cruelties and that darkness, we stood firm and staunch. At those moments of excitement and darkness, a new hope and solace was given to the hearts of people. Thousands upon thousands embraced this new and beauteous faith. I was given such a power that I felt like I could move mountains. Oh, how I wish I had a thousand lives and give them each and all to this beauteous cause. The Bob sacrificed himself 
to prepare humanity for the coming of Baha'u'llah, the promised one of all ages. Thank you.